welcome to the improv summit as always i'm your host spencer with me today i have a very special guest now i always say very special guest so i got in trouble for always saying very special guest so now i've taken the whole improv game and i started by putting the person's first letter of their first name and attach it to an adjective that starts with that letter so today i'm glad to introduce to you uh the <laughs> to dragon old travis How's it going? Tri trigonal to, to dragonal Tragonal. T Tetragonal. I feel like that's the name of a, of a, a dinosaur or something. <laughs> it probably is. It's a shape, I think. Or another way to say triangle. Tra tra triangle. It's Tetragonal. It's a Tetragonal. Tetragonal, Travis. Okay, I'll, okay, sure. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to try and own that adjective for this interview. <laughs> Great. Uh, you're very Tetragonal. <laughs> Not triangular. <laughs> I know. I, we, hey, we don't know what it means. I, they, like a, I'm I was going thinking with what like, I think it means. Like a tetrahedron or a, or a diagonal? It's a tragonal. Uh -huh. Just put it together. With like three sides, though. Wouldn't it be tri? tri or is it trying to be any shape it wants? Uh, like tetra. Triagonal. Like a tetra. Like a tetrahedron. Is that what you were saying? Oh, okay. Tetra. Tetragonal. 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 I thought that the, the emphasis was on a different syllable for that, but yeah it's, I'll, i mean it I'll can be a, you know what i'm a multi multi-shaped multi-faceted amorphous object there we go great which leads me right into my first question all about <laughs> yeah. uh what is your favorite shape no uh uh but uh let's <laughs> my personal Octagon. favorite shape is the i was gonna say i don't even know uh what my favorite shape would be uh anyways it's not about what my favorite shape is it's about you travis okay. and your improv experience so let's dive oh, into that cool. Great. What is your background in improv or your improv experience? Simple as that. Okay. Well, uh, I feel like my first major foray was in college, which I happened to find my college sh shirt. <laughs> OU Improv. Uh-huh. Um, OU. Like was, OU Improv, because I went to the University of Oklahoma. Um, it was started by two brothers who literally would just rent one of the rooms in um, – you know, by the cafeteria and like you just get his mm. friends and go and they, none of them were musical theater majors or theater majors. They were, they were a different breed. They were so smart. Their improv was so smart. Um, but that's where I started. And I did that for four years with them. And since they, it wasn't a, it wasn't san sanctioned by the university of Oklahoma, we had to change it to obviously unrehearsed improv and couldn't just call ourselves OU improv. But this was mm. one of the first shirts we had and I still have it and it's slowly falling apart, but it's got our entire, uh, schedule on the back it was every other Saturday night. That's mm -hmm. yeah, impressive. Yeah. Um, I have no further questions. No. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> great. Thanks for joining me. Um, That's where it just, started. I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, uh, this is obviously the unrehearsed uh, improv interview summit, well, uh, improv summit yeah. interview, whatever what? my show is called. Mm -hmm. um, I know what so, you're saying. <laughs> uh, words. I say a lot of words on this show, uh, and I try words. not to, but it doesn't words. happen. That being said, um, you know, for me, one of the reasons I'm doing this show is because I just love improv and I love talking to people about improv. So for you, what do you love about improv? When somebody's really able to let themselves go and just what if they're in like the mindset of a character or they're just given a prompt and they just go for it and they don't necessarily censor themselves. That's usually where you get into trouble with them. Am I trying to make this funny? Is this going to be, are people going to think I'm stupid? It's, it's the sort of thing where if they just go with whatever suggestion and go 100%, that's what I really love about it because there's a lot of times where people will, oh, I, oh, I wanted to do that. Like I wanted, to, I wanted to take my shirt off and go crazy. It's like, okay, well, you know, that would have been funny. You're telling me it's not funny now because, you know, it didn't happen. But when people go 100%, that's what I love. It's the freedom of it. Yeah, now's your chance yeah. to take your shirt off. Don't do it. Or do Don't a do noise it. or a character that you want yeah. to do. Maybe not necessarily the nudity part, but you know. Maybe I mean. like a maybe like a metaphorical like undressing. Like yeah, uh sure. like no, that's still weird. Uh let's okay, next question. Um <laughs> So you know, sometimes I have really great analogies and sometimes they just don't quite work. And that's okay. That's what improv is like. Sometimes you have great I improv and sometimes mm -hmm. improv just doesn't work. And that is a okay. Uh, sure. That being said, um, as I see the olive oil bleeding from my face um, as a Greek <laughs> man, um, I was wondering what elements of improv you've used in your everyday life. Like what, um, 
Like, you know, you get the idea. You get the idea. Um, everyday life. I mean, a lot of it is like anytime I interact with a stranger, like in the grocery store or in line somewhere or somebody who has a particular, oh, like has a, has a dog that I see or a, or a car or a, you know, an outfit that I think is cute. There is always an opportunity to interact with somebody new. I mean, they, you know, your parents say don't talk to strangers, but I got a, I got a dog over here making noise. Speaking uh, of dogs, I was um, going to say there's yeah. definitely a tiny little uh, few month old puppy in there. Yeah, she's definitely banging around. How do I know the that? Stuff. Maybe we'll Ooh, find out. I don't know. Um, but it's foreshadowing. Yeah, yeah, right. Just, um, just in my everyday life, just like sort of dealing with strangers. Like, there's so many times when you meet somebody that is it necessarily in the entertainment industry that I, I usually dub as a real person. Sometimes it's, it's hard to break through on a personal level and sometimes finding uh, something one that they can relate to and then just kind of chatting about it. I mean, it always mm -hmm. helps in conversation, like being able to keep a conversation going. Um, not again, it doesn't have to be funny, but it's, it has to be, it doesn't have to be interesting either, but you have to be interested in whatever it is that they're talking about or doing or saying, because then it makes yeah. the conversation it makes the conversation interesting for sure. So, yeah. Do you and want to I be think, interesting? Get interested. Yeah. That's a great way of putting it. Um, to be interesting, you got to get interested. I like that. Um, it, it also makes me think of the idea of like, when we interact with people, we don't know what they're going to say after we say sure. something. Sure. And so I think that that also leans into the idea of improv where, you know, before mm -hmm. I, when I was doing improv, I was like, I don't know what to say next. I'm worried I'm going to say the wrong thing. And then I right. discovered that that's not the case. Literally, improv is me listening and going, okay, I heard what you said. Now let me respond to that in a, like, as I would as a person. Yeah. Um, or an inanimate object or, you know, whatever the case may be. Sure. Um, but yeah, I think that I think that that's a good point of the fact that we use improv in our daily lives without realizing it. Why don't we take more interest in the everyday conversations and see like what what do we get out of those and what can we use and put sure. in our pockets for our improv like tool belt like what what are some things that we can learn because a learned experience is a big thing if i never go well, anywhere and i never talk to people i'm not gonna sure. learn anything <laughs> well that leads me to thinking that you can't so many so many especially improv like going into improv with a perceived outcome or character or result it's kind of the same way of like, you know, if you have a meeting or you're going in to have any, like a date or something, if you go in with a preconceived notion of this is going to go terrible or I'm going to get laid, I mean, you kind of just have to take it as it comes. And sometimes you also have to know your audience because gen generally improv is a safe space, but, yeah. you know, you can't just come out the gate, you know, you know, uh, really guns blazing with. Sure. touchy material but you definitely can commit 100 percent to a suggestion but don't you know but just don't i know there's, there's everybody's worried about like comedy in, in comedy for example like worrying about you know i'm going to offend somebody yeah you're going to offend somebody you could be the cleanest comic the cleanest improv player you're going to offend somebody but you can't necessarily worry about that but also don't you know don't go for the don't go for the cutthroat either so right right the the rule of thumb that i've been saying on this show is everything you do in improv is right Except for like the things that are not right. And I was like, if you know what I'm talking about, then improv is for right. you. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then maybe improv is not. <laughs> like right. there are wrong things to say and do in improv. Uh, sure. But that's also like wrong things to say and do in life. Uh, don't let your art imitate life in this case. Um, or do let it imitate. Anyways, the point is if you do bad things, don't do it in your improv. Uh, but maybe stop doing bad things. Um, mm, this, is a, this is a very <laughs> short side story. There, um, I, I did an improv show in Hollywood for years, every Saturday night when I moved here. Um, that's how I found my agent, of all things. But um, one, I had invited one of my roommates to come join it, and he had never done improv. And you want to talk about somebody doing everything that you shouldn't do, and it was, it was everything from saying you know, just things that had nothing to do with the suggestion, nothing to do with mm -hmm. the situation or the character. And I think at one point he had rolled the guy over on his back and was smacking his ass. I mean, it just it went off the rails. Wow. Very fast. Yeah, don't do that, especially yeah, yeah, without permission. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, I say F on this? <laughs> yeah, I this is this is my rule, uh, which everyone always asks that like in the middle of the conversation, which is funny. Um, <laughs> no one ever asked beforehand. Um I uh, of course not. I 
I I have no filter for my guests. I will not say any bad words on camera. Um, but I have no like oh. my guests can do whatever they want. No so blackmail for you. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> I just that that's that's what I say. Uh -huh. Um, I think I may have said like a bad word once, but it was like a soft a soft like a PG oh, word. Oh, fiddlesticks. It was like hell or something. I think. Right. Which do we really consider that a bad word? I don't know. Yeah. I guess it depends on the the person you are. <laughs> yeah. Sure. sure. Um, that. <laughs> that even if said, you say a bad, even if you don't say a bad word or a bad word, we all know what you really mean. So, yeah. Oh, hockey pucks. Yeah. Oh, mother plucker. It's like we yeah. know what you're saying. Yeah. The the what is it? The pleasant. Uh, I am a pleasant uh, plucker. Uh, mother mother pheasant. Mother uh, mother pheasant. Yeah. I never what could is... say it. And it's it, it working with, and all the years I worked with kids, I never attempted that one because I never could say it right. I couldn't even get it out of my mouth correctly. I, I would even, say one smart fellow and he smelt smart. See, I can't even do that. One smart fellow and he felt smart. Two smart fellows and they felt smart. Three smart fellows and they all smelt fart. See, that's what, how it usually comes out. <laughs> I've never even heard that, kids. but I still yeah. don't even, like, I am a pleasant, I am a pleasant plucker, a mother, I pluck mother pheasants. I, I'm a pleasant mother pheasant maybe practice it and we'll come back to it <laughs> yeah <laughs> the next episode on camera the next episode of this is just going to be me trying to figure this out for yeah, 20 right. minutes <laughs> right um that being said um so one thing that i i wouldn't say i struggle with an improv but it's just like i have a short attention span and just can't remember things very easily um I just don't remember every, every time I do an improv scene, I just forget what happened right after I did it. And especially if people like call back my character, I'm like, what, what do you want from me? I don't remember who, who am I in this? <laughs> who, just give me a clue. Give me a sign. Sure. What, what am I? Sure. Uh, don't call me by my character's name. Cause I won't remember. I may remember the character's name, but I don't remember what the character, like if you're like, come here, sure. Tucker, I'll be like, uh, how, how do I respond? How do I respond? I don't know. I don't know. Sure. Sure. But that's why I've got my 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 guard, my classics are like Kyle and Greg. I always go for Greg because <laughs> it's just it's easy to remember one syllable each. Kyle, so Greg, funny. Matt, John, Steve. Yeah, the one the one syllable no. name of Kyle. Yep. Um, that being Kyle. said, Kyle. Uh, okay. All right, Kyle. 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 I guess it's I guess well, it's the I'm southern. From the, it's I'm the from southern Oklahoma, so it's like hey Kyle. Yeah. So there you yeah, go. Yeah, I'm from Kyle. I'm from Florida, so it'd be Kyle. Kyle. <laughs> Kyle. Um, but that being said, there, there, there are scenes and like moments when I've like done improv auditions or improv performances that I will never forget because I had like an aha moment mm -hmm. or as an audience member, I was like, this scene was just so good that yeah. I will never forget it. Do you have, do you ever remember, do you remember a scene like as an audience member, as a, as a improviser where you're like, this scene was so solid. I will never forget it. There, there was one, there was a, f a friend of mine named, his name was Dave Thomas. I went to high school with him. Uh, not the Wendy's guy, um, that he had joined, he had joined a group after high school in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And there was a scene that he did. It was like, uh, where you do the scene forward. And then at any point they're like, rewind. And then they have to do the lines mm -hmm. in reverse, the actions in reverse play. And then it goes forward that he, you know, like any good entrance, he came in and he made the entrance, you know, so magnificent. Cause it was like, Hey y'all. And it's it's the one thing that they kept like, all right, rewind. Hey, you're here. Hey, y'all. And they kept like doing the whole thing. And I don't know why it just kept getting funnier and funnier because he kept doing it bigger and bigger mm -hmm. and bigger. And by the time it was over, it was just like, hey, y'all. Like it was just it was just mag it was magnificent. So that's one I always think about yeah, when I think about a, a, as an audience member. Um, there have been there's there's a game I love playing because I you know I'm a very physical person when it comes to improv. That is sign language, and usually, as as a, the comedy troupe I played with called Complex Comedy in uh, Hollywood for years, whenever we do that game, one of the one of the things that they really love to do is pit me out physically. So there was a set of stairs, and mm -hmm. you know, you 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 play sign language, and one of the experts would be like, "One way to solve erectile dysfunction is by." falling down the stairs and I, of course i would you know fake fall down the stairs and then get back up and but you can't do it just once you have to do it multiple times so i do it multiple times but that's one of those games i'd walk away with i'm like i i'm covered in bruises now or i'm mm -hmm. going to be um yeah. so yeah i love that game yeah that's awesome uh, i don't see that played very often but that's that's a fun one it's a um, yeah it's a it's a you just you're drenched by it if you're doing it right yeah. you're drenched by oh. it for sure. Uh, now is a time in the show where if you have any plugs, pitches, or promos, now is the time for the three Ps. <laughs> plugs, 
pitches or promos. Yes, um, thanks you, thank you for those plosives. Yeah, um, yeah, you can check me out on the, in, in the, the feature film, The Riot Act on Amazon Prime, uh, <laughs> which it took, it only took Spencer like a year to watch, so it's fine. Um, I think I even two? It. I don't even, yeah, well, I think it was I'm, get, I'm working. a half ago. I saw your part. You're working on it. Um, yeah, uh, you can check me out my Twitter handle and my Instagram at uh, Travis, the letter J Dixon, D-I-X-O-N, not the other way. Um, yeah, I don't know. There, I got some other Great. stuff coming up, but that'll be for later. Great. So, I love it. Uh, you can yeah. follow the socials to see what's coming up. Mm -hmm, exactly. <laughs> MrTravisDixon.com. There you go. The, the, the one and only Mr. Travis Joe Dixon. <laughs> No, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Travis Dixon.com. I think that's what it is. I don't even remember anymore. Yeah, you just Google just Google it. You'll figure it out. You'll, uh, you'll find it. It'll it's be crappy, it'll it'll be down there. It'll be down it's there. It's a crappy the, Wix page. You'll see it. You'll be like, it'll be down in the comments. It's the free Wix page. There's a difference. Yeah. There's yeah. there's free and there's pro. There's free. There's <laughs> yes. This is the free one. You get all the information you need. Um well, Travis, thanks so much for joining me. The last question I have for you is the reason why uh, really this improv summit exists. And that's uh the reason is because before pandemic, but even now with pandemic, I have a lot of people who would come up to me and say, oh, Spencer, you've done a lot of improv. Where should I take improv? Uh, and I have a hard time answering that question because I feel like there's a lot to unpack in that question. Sure. So if someone was to come up to you and say, like, where should I take improv? What would be one tip or one piece of advice you'd give to them to help guide them on their improv journey? Where should you take improv? Or, yeah, okay, gotcha. So... I'm of the mindset that, I mean, improv, yeah, is, is, is what you make of it. Are you, do you want to be funny? Do you want to be, is it for, is it for dramatic pieces? Is it to, is it to help you? Hi. Is it there, to, there she is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, I mean, is it to, here we go. Is it to there help she you is. better understand or better talk to people? It's, it's really, what do you want to get out of it? And, um, there, there was, uh, and I, I'm getting no kickback from this, but there was one place I went to called the Actor, the Acting Center, and they they have an improv program which it doesn't. It's not necessarily like short form or long form. It's 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 improv to help you develop characters. So again, mm. it's not a plug for them, but they have a very interesting way of doing it. And and basically, it's just you just it's like a, you get you give yourself a noun or you give yourself a, you give yourself an occupation, and then you can slowly filter in situations uh emotions and then kind of build a character around it however you want to do it um and the, the biggest thing i took away from that is you can get these imp if you get these improvs in your body it doesn't necessarily ha necessarily have to be with another person just you can just practice this stuff like okay just just open up your computer and go to you know uh whatever's trending and just try and improvise with whatever is there like mm. those are suggestions that you can get um from you know like a um you know, fireman all of a sudden comes up. Okay, sure. Use that, get that in your body. How would a fireman walk? How would a fireman, you know, work? How does a fireman mm -hmm. sleep? How does he eat? And then you start running through things like, okay, well now this fireman's going through a divorce and yeah. he's losing his house and he's got all these other things. Now add that into the improv and see where you can go from there. Um, one of the, one of the, I don't know if it's not a, it, it was one of the, uh, one of the small issues I had with it though. We would get paired up me and another guy and i remember at one point i was going over my character my my you know all of my information cards that i had and in the middle of it he says to me you know you know you can speak right and i thought absolutely absolutely but this improv wasn't for him it was mm. for me so that's also something you have to take into consideration um you're not always performing for someone when you're developing a character and using improv as that tool. It's, it's for you and it's sometimes yeah. internal and how those internal structures will then help materialize and dictate how a person walks, talks, feels, stuff like that. I hope, Great. I, I hope I that answered that. your question. So. Yeah, I think, I think it's, that's, it really it's dealer's choice with whatever you want to answer yeah. for that question, okay. uh, however you interpret well, it. Um, sure. One thing I would add, and this is yeah. something I think I started to tell you at one point, um, that whenever I'm working with, um, somebody on their scenes or I'm working on a character myself in the in the sides usually if somebody is interrupting you I always have I always know what that character is going to say if that person mm -hmm. does not interrupt me and uh inversely if I'm reading with somebody 
and and I'm supposed to interrupt somebody, I usually wait to see what they're going to say. Because mm -hmm. normally someone will be like, and then I walked in the door and you, this is where you cut me off now. That just means they haven't, obviously, they're, uh -huh. they're, they're not in the character, they're not in the words, and that's something I like mm -hmm. to throw on other people. But yeah, yeah, that's great. And I've done that before. And I'll keep going. And people are like, the line ends before that. I'm like, I know, but you didn't cut me off. So mm -hmm. I kept like, going. Right here, I got something to say. <laughs> you got to stop me. So I don't just stop yeah. at the word you. Uh, why you? I mean, it's di yeah, it's different. Like, for example, if you're shooting something and you're getting coverage and it's like, OK, you have to stop talking right there. That makes right. sense. You know, right. Exactly. Well, Travis, thanks so much for joining me here on the Improv Summit. Um, I did say that, that was the last question I had for you, but as always on the show, I am a giant liar, um, uh, just like Paul okay. Giamatti, a big fat liar. And um, I have one more question for you. And that question okay. is, uh, we've been talking a lot about improv. Do you want to do some improv? Oh, that, oh I got to go. I'm so sorry. I got to go. <laughs> I got to go. I'm so sorry. Bye. <laughs> No, I'd love to. Let's do it. <laughs> Great. Uh, all right. That's an Let's example do it. of that's an example of no and. <laughs> yeah, no but. <laughs> no, no but. Um, no but. I'm You're not the first person that's done it either. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> it's been so a not... minute, so we'll see. Yeah. We'll see how rusty well, I am. All right, let's do it. We're in the same space. Wow. Uh, what do you know? <laughs> I have with me some handy dandy note cards oh. that all have suggestions on them of things that are not specific at all. Completely not specific. Right. And we're going to see if we can come up with a suggestion based on one of the, right. or a scene based on one of these suggestions. Oh, great. Okay. So I'll have you pick one of these. I'm going to go right this time. Right? There we go. What is the suggestion? Well, it could be why? Or it could be. I think it's the latter, but we can do it whatever. Show it to the camera. Mm. Show everyone. This is the suggestion. Wait, what do you think? Is it hmm or way? Uh, I think when I wrote it, it was hmm. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll go with hmm. So the suggestion is hmm. hmm. So Travis, all I need to know is who you would like to initiate this scene. Uh, I, take it away. Great. All right. Thank away. you. <clears throat> hmm is the suggestion. Okay. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. It's a sailboat. <laughs> that makes sense. I see the water, the ruffles. Yeah. That's what it was. I couldn't place that blue, but wait, now... Wait, 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 wait. Oh. It's hmm. an umbrella. See the, the rain? That's what it is. It's an umbrella. It's an umbrella. It's the same shape as mm -hmm. the, the sailboat, but flip it upside down. But hold on, hold on. If I take this... Oh, that one made me It's a pepper shaker. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, oh man. this goodness. interactive art oh. is amazing. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. Oh. And scene. <laughs> All right. Oh. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks so much for coming to the Improv Summit Home Edition. Uh, that's Travis. I'm Spencer. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.